Recently, I bought my first racing sim setup, which went very well. I was like trying to like, to, oh, you can actually drive. <laughs> but it did get me very interested in the hobby. So I decided to head on to the used market and see if I could scrounge up something a bit better. Now, before we have a look at the used racing sim market, I want to briefly walk you through sim racing wheelbase technology, which sounds really boring, but it actually isn't. And according to a bunch of Garys online, makes a really big difference. There are three ways in which racing sim wheelbases connect the steering wheel to the motor that drives the feedback. And as far as I can tell, these three methods exist in a distinct hierarchy of goodness. At the bottom of this hierarchy, we have gear-based systems, which as the name suggests, connects the steering wheel to the motor using gears. Now, according to enthusiasts, the problem with this method is that it's very bad at reproducing smooth steering action, you can really feel the notchiness in the gears, which means it can't reproduce detailed feedback, making it the loser Aww. tier drive tech. Now, as far as I can tell, most budget wheels use this technology, including the Amazon one we tried before, and most of the very common Logitech racing wheels. And people seem to like that Logitech wheel quite a lot, so maybe the technology isn't that bad? I guess we'll find out. Now, in the middle of the hierarchy, we've got belt drive bases, which, as the name suggests, connects the steering wheel to the motor using belts as opposed to gears. Now, again, according to enthusiasts, these can go a long way to alleviating the vague notchiness of a geared base, so it feels a lot smoother, but you can still feel the changes in tension in the belts, which can give you kind of weird feedback, and those belts can wear down over time, potentially impacting long-term reliability. But apparently, Apparently, it's quite a step up from geared bases. And then finally, we've got the God King tier at the top, direct drive bases, which according to people who have used them is the greatest thing since Michael Fassbender's package. Direct drive bases typically have a servo motor in them, and then the steering wheel is connected directly to like the spinny bit in the middle of the motor. Because you have a much smoother direct connection between the wheel and the motor, you don't really feel the base as much apparently, giving you much more accurate feedback and they tend to be way more powerful. You get wildly powerful bases that can easily snap both your arms like they're made of wit picks. The main problem with this technology is just that it's more expensive, even though they have been coming down in price quite a lot over the last couple of years. This Fanatec Direct Drive Kit, for example, only costs a bit more than the current generation Logitech Loser Aww. Drive one, and it's way more upgradable. Now, one of the companies that make these Direct Drive bases, Moza, did reach out to send a base and wheels set up over for me to try, which I was very tempted to accept, but I don't want to include it in this video because we're looking at like used, cheaper, entries into the market. But let me know in the comment section down below if I should check that out for a video because I'm really interested to see how it would compare to these other bases. And with arguably too much context, let's have a quick look at the used market before checking out the couple of setups I bought. Starting with eBay, where the higher end direct drive and belt driven stuff seems to hold on to their value very well, almost to the point of delusion on the seller's part. Why would I buy a used one for more than I can buy a new one for? And even the ones that are priced anywhere close to sanely have very high shipping and import duties basically erasing any savings to be had. And the whole shipping issue is exacerbated by the fact that I live in Canada and most sim racing enthusiasts seem to be British for some reason. Shipping is also an issue for the more budget Logitech wheels which I really wanted to try one out because they're so popular and I think it's a great point of reference. So I headed over to Craigslist for some local back alley used knife battling which had its own problems the first of which was very limited selection. And then the couple of options that there were had a very common Vancouver used market problem where there were just a bunch of new ones that people bought on sale and are now trying to scalp for MSRP. However, if you very closely monitor the market, deals do pop up, one of which I snagged. Now, unfortunately, this is a new one due to market reasons, but I really wanted to check out one of these Logitech sets because they're by far the most popular. A couple of good used deals did pop up locally, but they sold so quickly that I just missed them every time. And I wasn't going to buy a scalped one, so I just bought the sale new one. But don't worry, we've got a very exciting used setup to look at a bit later. 
It comes with a 42 watt power brick to power all of that driving force. There's some advertising for you to buy more stuff. Starting off with the pedal box, which is already like four times the size of the one that came with the Amazon one. We've got metal pedals. Ooh, there's some resistance to the brake pedal. The rest of it's very plasticky, but it's a huge improvement over that Amazon one. It actually sits in place as well. Ooh, and it connects to the steering wheel with this Mesozoic period port looking thing. That's nice and retro. Oh, on the base, you've got this carpet catcher. Oh, like that. That is very useful for carpet. The steering wheel is wrapped in real leather, which feels quite nice. The wheel's kind of small compared to a real steering wheel, which despite the nicer materials still makes it feel like a toy. On the note of toy, the button placement on the inside of the wheel is nice and ergonomic. We've got some nice, if sharp feeling metal paddle shifters, but unfortunately this Logitech one doesn't have that awesome included sequential gear changer, which is a real shame. I need to be more aggressive with the shifts to really get the speed up. But you can get a shifter add-on for this one, which I'm not entirely sure if it works as a sequential gear lever. All in all, with this Logitech set, all of the touch points have really high quality materials on them, and then everything that you don't normally touch is super plasticky, but it does feel like something that should hold up well used. And from what I've read online, these Logitech wheels are more reliable than a wood-burning stove. Oh, ooh. And it even comes with table clamps, not suckers like the Amazon one, so we may be able to use it without having to duct tape it to the table. Pizza. Oh wait, I just realized I still need to plug all the other cables in, and with it mounted on the desk like this, you can't really access it, so I'm gonna have to take it off and redo that. And after plugging in the cables and setting it up again, I was ready for some framework of reference. The moment I sit down, I can kind of tell why a frame would make a big difference, because with this kind of setup, you can't really adjust your driving position much, and now I just, I'm in full granny mode. But with some shifting around, I got it to a point where I felt a bit less like a 90 year old behind the wheel. That feels a bit better. Oh, VR mode. I do really think this is the best use case for VR, like actual driving sim racing. I was talking to one of my friends about it the other day and it, it really seems like the best application for it because it, oh. That's so notchy feeling. It's like, but before I could crush some sick gravel or whatever, I had to download some drivers and calibrate the wheel. Oh. Oh. Whoa, there's so, oh, oh, drift. Oh, there's so little feedback, what? That is, that feels so different to what I was expecting it to feel like. So I've been using my used wheel for the last two weeks and it does not feel at all like this one. I, I wonder to what extent the game has to do with it. I then spent ages playing around with settings to get the driving feel to make sense to me, and maybe also make it feel a bit less like the world's limpest handshake. But if anything, I just kept making it worse. Like it's not turning. And once I got Dirt 2 completely unplayable, I decided to just abandon it for Forza, for now. Okay, let's, let's give it a try, because with the other wheel, which we're going to look at in a little bit, Forza worked perfectly, pretty much straight out of the box. And then as some kind of karma, I guess, Forza's screen capture just stopped working the moment I started driving. So with my apologies, please imagine some amazing gameplay over the next little bit. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. This feels way, way better. But then the force feedback kicked in. Whoa. That's such weird force feedback. You can really feel the gears clacking away inside. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> because it feels so simulated. Even on its lowest setting, the force feedback on this wheel in Forza feels really unnatural because you have similar limp steering feel as in Dirt Rally 2 underneath, and then the intense rumble feels like a separate thing just thrown over top to feel cool or whatever, but if anything, it just distracts from the little bit of usable feedback the steering wheel gives you. 
but it's still so much better than using a controller. It's like one of the most fun things you can do on a computer. And on that note, let's have a look at the very exciting used setup I bought. <laughs> I managed to knife battle this reasonably heavily used belt-driven Thrustmaster set off of Craigslist for 460 Canadian dollars. That includes the frame and a Formula One style wheel so you can be real sweaty or cosplay as a Tesla owner. Now I'm actually not a huge fan of the Formula One style wheel because like I said, rally is the best racing sim genre and that's very much not a racing wheel. I prefer like a round one. Anyway, to put the price into perspective, that Logitech one we were looking at earlier, new, not on sale, sells for 400 Canadian dollars. With tax and stuff, that's a very similar amount to this one. And again, it even comes with the frame. Now to set it up, you just kind of pull that out. And then there you go. Starting off with the wheel, it's made of metal over here. And then we've got Alcantara on the grits, which is the raciest material. But I think it's a really stupid material to have on touch points because it becomes disgusting the moment you look at it funny. And you can see that these are quite heavily worn, but they still feel decent. The paddle shifters on the other hand, Listen to that. Now the base is a Thrustmaster TX servo base, which supports Xbox and PC. And like I said, it's a belt driven base with pretty brutal build quality, but you don't really interact with that bit. So I, I guess that's fine. The pedals are a decent improvement over the Logitech ones. You've got much better pedal feel and actual resistance in the throttle pedal, and you still get metal caps, but the rest of it is quite plasticky. So and with no calibration and setting changes, I jumped straight back into Forza where I still didn't realize that the screen capture wasn't working. Oh, just the difference between the pedals and the shifters. Because the, the like, the belt system does both this, the steering and the feedback, you can tell what the car's front wheels are doing a lot more than with the Logitech one. Like, the feedback is way more subtle than the Logitech, but it's so much more realistic. Oh, this is so much better. See, because you can control your power slides way better because you can feel what the car is doing as opposed to kind of having to guess. I then tried some more Dirt Rally, which without any calibration or setup worked great. It's so much better. Now I just needed to learn how to do rally because I don't know the track at all and I don't know how to follow pace notes. Now that I knew what to look for, I went back to the Logitech base and set up some Logitech profiles with it and reduced the throttle sensitivity, which made it a lot more usable. Dirt Rally 2 was a lot less gratuitous with how it used the rumble than Forza was, which meant it translated the feeling of the car through the Logitech steering wheel way better than Forza did. Although even in Dirt Rally, when compared to the Thrustmaster wheel, the Logitech set feels a lot more numb and less deep. Detailed. Also, the Logitech pedals are quite a big step down from the Thrustmaster ones in terms of brake, feel, and throttle resistance, helping you control the car more subconsciously. All in all, the Thrustmaster base just feels that much more realistic. And this comparison's gotten me real curious about direct drive to see how much better this experience can get. And maybe some VR? Either way, keeping your eyes peeled on the used market can get you a great entry into trying out this very fun hobby. Just do your research, be patient, and until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.